Hi folks, my name is James Brereton and I am a lecturer at University Centre Sparsholt for Zoo Biology. I'm also the typesetter for EASA's Journal of Zoo and Aquarium Research. This presentation is based on a paper entitled Current Directions in Animal Enclosure Use Studies and it was published in January 2020 in JSAR. Now it's important to be able to measure space use for our animals. It's a nice indicator of welfare, especially when it's combined with behavioural measures or physiological measures. After all, it seems a little pointless to provide a lot of space for our animals if they're not going to use it. So if we want to know what is most suitable and most valued for our animals, we essentially need to measure how they use the space we provide them with. However, we have a bit of a challenge in that there is a huge amount of research available on enclosure use across a wide range of taxa. And to researchers starting out in this field, this can be quite daunting. What is the best way of assessing how my animal uses its space? Now, this paper aimed to do just that. It addressed 50 years across five different journals um, to find out what types of enclosure use were actually used by studies. And essentially it found four generic types of enclosure use measurement. The first zone occupancy spread of participation index, the original, modified spread of participation index, and a final index known as electivity index. Now in terms of the taxonomic groups that were identified in these studies, 77% of studies focused in on mammals with very few appearing for our reptiles, amphibians and our fish. However, in the time since this paper was published, there have been more of these papers creeping in, which is really good to see. So moving on to the categories, zone occupancy is simply a measure of what percentage of time the animals spend in each area. One problem with this, of course, is some areas may be larger by nature. The traditional SBI prov provides a value between zero and one, but it has some of the same shortcomings as our zone occupancy. Essentially, all zones have to be of equal size. Now, this particular index has been well used in the research, but it applies a few more restrictions to your studies. The second index, modified spread of participation index, is really useful for those of you who want to zone your exhibits according to different biological parameters. You could zone it up, for example, according to UV or according to different temperature based zones or even proximity to visitors. It produces a value of zero between zero and one, which tells you how much or how little of the space is being used. The final index, electivity index, builds on this further, and it can actually tell you on a zone by zone basis whether your animal is over or under using the resource based on the amount of space that's available. So large areas of space, this index assumes that your animal should be spending large periods of time in those areas. Now, what's really lovely is these indices are really easy to put into play. You essentially will need to measure each zone. Now this could be for a small exhibit, it could be measured in person, but you could also use Google Earth Pro for much larger paddock based exhibits. You can also fit this sort of study really easily into a keeper day or a busy researcher schedule. This could be through, for example, camera traps, or it could even be a snapshot as you pass by the enclosure. And in terms of what the results tell you about your animals, they can tell you how your animal is interacting and whether there are hidden elements of the exhibit that they find either really valuable or that they are avoiding. Thank you very much for your time.